I'm your host, Brooke Goldstein, and we are joined with Eden Dowling, who is the first transgender model on Gay Times Magazine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's beautiful out. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Thank of you. <laughs> so, Eden, how did you manage to get on the cover of this magazine? Yeah, uh, being on the cover of Gay Times was really awesome. Uh, they reached out to me a couple of months ago, and actually, they wanted to use me in uh, prostate awareness. But being transgender, I was like, hey, we don't have a prostate, so maybe we could do something that's a little more relative. And so he was, you know, the owner, Ryan, was like, hey, you know, let's come back, let's circle back, I'd love to tell your story. And so uh, the turn of the year came, January came, we set up a photo shoot, and uh, you know, they, they did a really amazing interview with me, just getting really in-depth, kind of behind-the-scenes story of what it was like growing up uh, you know, and discovering that you're transgender and kind of, you know, diving into the activism scene and, and all that stuff. So it was, it was a real pleasure and I was super honored to be the first trans man on the cover of their That's magazine. That's amazing. And yeah. I think you're an influence to so many people oh, out thank there. thank you. Thanks. So can you tell us a little bit about your early life? Yeah, uh, you know, I was actually born and raised in Long Island, New York, right here where we're filming. Perfect. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> And, um, you know, I grew up here. I was, I came out as a lesbian when I was about 15 or 16 years old. I was one of the only, like, people in our school at the time. And, uh, you know, I went to the community college here, and I kind of was feeling really lost. I didn't quite fit in with the crowd that I was supposed to be represented with, like lesbians, gay, LGB. And uh, I met a trans man one day, and it kind of changed my entire life. I kind of realized that my feelings of feeling lost and scared and depressed and all that trauma that kind of happens when you're a teenager discovering who you are. And, uh, you know, I met this one man, and, and it totally changed my life. And I was able to discover who I was, and I, I went from pretty much kind of just um, living life uh, to to being alive, if that makes any sense. You know yeah, what I mean? that does. Yeah. And what was the first moment you realized, like, wow, I'm actually a guy now? Um, you know, I, it, it's a funny, quick story, but I was at a 7-Eleven, and um, I had just started my transition medically, which means I started taking hormones and stuff. And um, I bought a pack of gum, like at 7-Eleven, I need to like break change or something. And the guy was like, oh, come on, sir, you're up next. You know, there was a line, he was like trying to rush me out. And he's like, come on, sir, let's go. And he like pays for me, he's like, thanks. And he leaves, and that was it. And it was just a simple acknowledgement from a stranger calling me a sir, acknowledging my true gender, how I truly felt. It like kind of changed my whole perspective. And I was like, this is awesome. That's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so you competed to be on the cover of Men's Health Magazine, correct? Yes, yes I did. And now, were you a finalist? Yeah, so actually uh, it was a voting, so you could vote online. And I ended up being in the finalists. Uh, they picked like the top five with the most votes. And I actually got the highest recorded votes ever, which is wow. 72,000 votes. That's amazing. Yeah, they had numbers like 1 through 21, the top 21. And if you had like a soccer team and you put numbers 2 through 21 and added up all their votes and put them against me, I still beat them in votes. That's crazy. So, yeah, in my mind, you know, it was definitely a win for the trans community. I mean, you know, we got the first uh, representation of transgender men in the magazine on the cover of their special edition of November 2015. So. You know, um, they were all big steps, and you know, just I think it, it proved a lot. You know yeah, what I mean? For I sure. Agree. Yeah. And you got to go on Ellen because of this. Yeah. Tell us about that. That was epic. Ellen is everything you think she is. Um, <laughs> her eyes are as blue as the ocean. That's what I always say. Um, she was really great. You know, she said a little something to me during a commercial break, just kind of saying that you know. She really wants her people, like her viewers, the reach that she has to know that, you know, we're just people trying to live a life like everyone else, you know, and right. she really wants that to get across. And that meant a lot to me in the community. So it was really awesome. That's so amazing. Yeah. Well, I got to sit in her white chairs. You know, oh, maybe, yeah? maybe one day your, these will be upgraded. You know, you guys can switch <laughs> off. <laughs> Definitely. Well, we'll be right back. See you soon.
Hi, I'm Tim Stead I'm from Star Communications. We're a marketing support company. And if you need help with your next marketing project, please call 273-1900 or you can go to our website, starcommunications.us. Welcome back. So I want to know with all that's happening in the world and also like on social media, how do you manage to deal with all the hate that goes on? Yeah, you know, I, I get this question a lot because there is a lot of like hate and pessimism online, right? Yeah. And um, even just like just from my, my gender identity and even just being an optimist, I'm like a very big daydreamer, you know, I'm very optimistic. Uh, they don't really like that online. They don't like no. you to feel good about yourself or have something <laughs> positive to say, right? They right. want to like bring you down. Um, honestly, I mean, I, I wish that I had some clear cut answer, but the truth is, is I just go through the emotions. You know, first I try not to read the comments, right? I think that's, that's everyone's smart. everyone's first go to. But how many people actually? Like, how many times do you actually not read the comments, I right? Know. It's hard not to. Yeah. So I think I just go through the same things that everyone goes through. I read the comment. I feel hurt. You know, like usually they're offending you. They're they're deliberately attacking you, and uh, I feel hurt. And then I just kind of kind of take a deep breath and I, I acknowledge that, you know, like I'm in a good place so I'm able to send out a lot of love. People yeah. who aren't in good places, they're not able to send out as much love, you know? So I just try to remind myself of that and I move on. You know, I try to send them love and feel bad for them. Like this person is so upset in their life that they have to go out and put someone else down to make themselves feel better. Right. And that to me means that they're they're not feeling pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so although they're hurting me, I feel bad for them because they're hurting like that all the time. They're the ones really hurting. Exactly. And plus, I delete stuff. If I don't like your comment and if it's rude or you're attacking someone on my feed, I delete it. It's good my it's my channel, it's my, you know, Facebook, it's my Instagram. I'm allowed to delete it, you know? Would you let someone, a negative person, into your party? No. You'd be like, listen, you're mean. You're making fun <laughs> of everyone. Right out. Get out of here. That's so true. Exactly. And your vlogs have helped reach out to people, right? Yeah, totally, totally. So you just vlog your everyday life, kind of? Yeah, you know, um, when I was transitioning horm with hormones and stuff in the beginning, I was, like, vlogging, like, how my body was changing, how I was feeling, um, you know, just the interactions from growing up as a female to being accepted into society as a male and the differences there. And uh, lately, in the last year or two, with all that's been going on, yeah, I got my camera over there, just been vlogging, <laughs> following it ar me around, you know. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's been a blast. It's been a blast. So how do you manage to stay in such good shape? Tell us your secrets. <laughs> uh, you know, passion, baby, passion, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I love fitness. It really helped me in the beginning of my transition. I would go to the gym. I felt really strong. All those endorphins run in, you know. You see, you build strength. Your body starts to change, yeah. you know. And uh, it's been a really big outlet for me. I, I really see it as like a form of meditation. And some people laugh because they're like, you're like grunting and lifting all these weights. How are you meditating? But you know, you're breathing in and out. You're focused on your form, your repetition. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, expended energy that's, you know, thoughts built up into vibration and pushed through this massive weight, you know? Yeah. You always, I always feel leaving like, oh man, I feel, feel so good. energy. Yeah, right? Sometimes you get to the gym, you feel like, not very good and then you leave and you're like oh man I could take on the day so, so to start true. the day with that like it's addicting you oh, know yeah. so and do you plan to compete or anything you know I've thought a couple of times about competing um right now I feel like if 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 the opportunity comes to me I'll probably take it but I think until I feel like my activism in the trans community and in that world you know kind of is kicked up um, maybe it's not off the table, but I wouldn't say it's like, you know, the, what I'm having for dinner tomorrow. You know right. what I mean? So, so we'll see where it takes us. We'll see. Yeah. And right now you're speaking at different events. Yep. Yep. Uh, I just came from Boston pride, which was awesome. Going to Kentucky, Indiana pride too, uh, next week. So that'll be a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. What are your biggest hopes for the future? Oh man, my biggest hope for the future, like I said, I'm an optimist, I'm a daydreamer. I live in a different world than everyone else where everyone gets along and they appreciate each other for what they have to offer to the world. So honestly, for the future, I just hope that people, uh, you know, in the fitness industry, I really hope that people uh, start recognizing that fitness is not just about the body. You know, it's really an inner connection to you. You have to feel good about yourself, not just how you look in the mirror, but how you actually are, how you're living your life, you know? And that's why I think so many fitness people become so optimistic because they realize 
wow, I just took an hour out of my day every day for the last six months and I changed my life dramatically, you know? And so I hope people can recognize that and start accepting each other for who they are, you know? Love, baby. Love. I know it's I know it's so simple and so like basic, but it's really all you know, really does solve a lot of things, you know. I completely so. agree. And thank you for all your giving to people oh, of and course. you know, motivating them. Thank you. And I hope the best for you for the future. Oh thanks, you too. I really can't wait for this channel to take off. It'll it'll be good times. You have to come back for more. Oh yes. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for joining us. Of course. You guys will have to check out his YouTube channel. It's awesome. And join us for another episode of Fitness Student Fashion. Bye. I'm sorry.